Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the model rail exclusive GWR16XX pannier tank made by Rapido Trains <laughs> So back in 2018, Model Rail announced the 16XX Pannier tank, which was to be, to be produced by Rapido Trains. Now at the back of the release of Batman's 94XX, we've now got the 16XX, which has just been released. And since this was announced, this is something I've been wanting to get, because as I've said before, I do have quite a soft spot for the GWR Pannier tanks. So it was only natural that I was going to get a 16XX. And the one I've gone for is number 1629 in the BR Black with the early emblem. And this one has the Busby chimney. Now there is a reason why I've gone for this particular one, but I'm going to be explaining that once I've got the model unboxed and down on the layout. So without further ado, let's get straight into the unboxing and then we can get the model down on the layout. Because I'm really looking forward to this. So here is the 16XX, out of the box and down on the layout. Now I have to be honest, upon opening the box one of the whistles was loose in the box. So I had to spend quite a bit of time putting the whistle back into place. Which wasn't easy to do, believe me. Now to be honest, when we first received these models we shouldn't be having to fix detail parts back on them again. However that being said, it was delivered by Royal Mail. You know, sometimes they do throw the parcels around, so, you know, to be honest, I guess that's not the sort of thing that can't really be unexpected, should that be the case. So I'm not going to put it down to poor assembly or anything like that, because as it was delivered by Royal Mail, then the chances are the parcel might have been thrown about a bit, and that could have, of course, dislodged one of the whistles. But it's been sorted now, it's been fixed back into place, but again, it's not something we should have to do. But aside from that though, there were no other quality control issues with this loco. Every single part that you see in the model, it's been correctly assembled. There's no damage or any blemish marks or anything like that on the model. And also, this model runs absolutely beautifully out of the box. And I have to say that this is one of the smoothest and quietest mechanisms that I've seen on a model. Especially of all the models that I've got. The model also has a flickering firebox, which is a feature that I guess now is starting to become a standard feature with locomotives such as this. And again, this is a feature that I really do like. It's always nice to see the flickering fireboxes on these models. So now we move on to the detail. So first of all, we have metal sprung buffers. We've also got a coupling hook that's already been pre-fitted, though you do get in the accessory bag some screw link couplings which have the hooks on them so I guess in that case you'd remove the hooks on the model already and then fit the ones that you get in the detail bag you've also got pre-fitted vacuum pipes as well and a standard NEM tension lock couplings now the NEM pockets themselves are something to talk about on this model because as you can see on this model particularly looking at this one under the front of the loco it sticks out quite a bit. All the other locos I have, the NEM pockets are hidden under the models. They don't stick out like this, but on this model, they do stick out. Now, the NEM pocket on the back of the loco, it does stick out, but not as much as it does on the front loco. So it does stick out a little bit, but not much. 
However, the one on the front, the way it sticks out, it does look a bit silly, if I'm honest. Now I'm just going to test to see just how close the couplings are on this model. So I've taken one of my vans and coupled to the loco, as you can see there is quite a gap there. As you can see, you can see just how far the buffers are away on the wagon compared to those on the loco. And it's the same story with the front of the loco. Again, I'll couple the van up. Again, just look at the gap between the wagon and the loco. I mean, I think, to be honest, I think perhaps in this case, I think because the coupling sticks out more than it does on the front of the loco, because of how far the nymph pocket sticks out, I think, to be honest, I think the gap between the van and the loco does look a bit bigger. So that does look quite silly, if I'm honest. Now, because I don't use tension lock couplings anymore on my layout, and I use hunk couplings, because this loco was going to have hunk couplings anyway, I have fitted the hunk coupling on the back of the loco, and I'm going to see if the hunk couplings have made a difference. Well, there is still a gap between the loco and the van. To be honest, I don't think it looks as bad as it was. But then in hindsight, especially if you look at it from this angle, I don't think that looks too bad. So I think that that is better, could be closer, but not too bad. However, if we take away the NEM pockets to one side, I think we still have a stunning model. On the running board, as we can see, we have separately fitted lamp irons. We've also got a separately fitted lamp iron above the smoke box door, as well as separately fitted metal handrails. On the front of the pannier tanks, which is what they're called, hence why these locomotives are named pannier tanks in the first place, we have steps for the crew to climb up to get on top of the tanks if they need to. On the smoke box door, we've got separately fitted smoke box door darts and a separately fitted smoke box door number plate with the number 1629 crisply applied on there. We've also got a shed plaque crisply applied onto the smoke box door and the shed code for this loco is 85A which originally it, this was the code for Worcester sub sheds at Evesham that was up to 1963 later it became the code for Hartlebury then later Honeybourne in 1965 it was Kingham to 1962, Ledbury from 1961 to 1964 and then later in Morton in Marsh. Now we come to what I personally think is the most interesting feature with this model and that is that this loco is fitted with the Busby chimney which is a spark arrester. And the reason I've chosen one of these locos with the spark arrester Busby chimney is because I've always wanted to see a GWR locomotive with this style of chimney in RTR. And as soon as th these locos were announced, that some of these will be having the spark arresters, I was ecstatic. And so immediately this was going to be the one that I was going to have with this stall chimney. And also, you know, it adds a bit more interest and variety to the layout rather than just having the same or similar type of chimney on every steam loco. And the detail of the chimney itself is superb. I mean, just look at that detail inside there of the chimney. And also the detail on both sides of it as well. I mean, it is stunning. On the top of the tanks of the loco, there's some nice rivet detail. You've also got the dome there. You've got the water tanks, which these are actually removable and they reveal screws which helps to get the body off. Of course you have glazing in the cab windows. You've also got the GWR safety valve bonnet and of course you have the whistles which are separately fitted and they've been painted as well which do look really nice. Of course we have a separately fitted metal handrail applied on the model that runs round 
the pannier tanks and around above the smoke box door and goes right up to the cab sides. You also get smaller handrails also on the tanks as well. Again made of metal. And also you get some pipework detail as well under the running plate. Again that detail has been separately applied. You've also got some inside motion on this model as well. It is a little hard to see but you can just about make it out. It doesn't work but it's still a nice bit of detail to have. On the running board we have the wheel splashes or wheel arches however you choose to call them. Again you've got a separately fitted metal handrail just there. You've also got the reversing lever as well and some steam pipe detail. Under the running plate we have a footstep in the middle just there with some nice rivet detail. You've also got a footstep under the cab and also on the cab side you've got loads of rivets as well as the number plate of the Loco's running number 1629. You don't get any etched number plates but they're printed on. The printed ones I think they still look nice. You've also got separately fitted metal handrails on the bunker and just down the sides of the cab doors as well as again steps for the crew to climb up and get up to either the roof or on top of the bunker. Now with the bunker itself the end of the bunker appears to be in a separately fitted part rather than just one piece and if you look especially on the rear of the bunker you can see there's a join line there now I don't know why that piece has been separately fitted however to be honest I've had to put it in, into the light just here because in certain lighting you can't really see it anyway so that's not something that I'm personally fussed about that's something that I can forgive because at the end of the day when this loco is running around the layout my eyes are not just going to be constantly fixed on that little thing when this loco is running I'm going to be admiring the loco running on the layout not that join line and in my videos you guys are never going to see that anyway and to be quite honest I'm not going to really take any much notice of it either so that's something that I can let slip that's not something that I mind personally some people might not like it but you know at the end of the day I'm not fussed about it because I still think that this is a stunning model and I'm not just saying that to be generous so now I turn my attention to the cab interior detail and I do apologize for the very bright light that's because I'm having to use a little torch because it's really difficult to even see properly into here but as you can see all the cab interior detail has been painted and it's all there and it's just fantastic to see the cab interior detail on models like this painted because it not only adds to the realism of the model and makes it look more realistic it makes it more detailed as well on the rear windows we have the guard irons as you can see again there's glazing in the cab windows and on the back just there of the cab we've got some nice rivet detail on the bunker just on the end there we have separately fitted metal handrails we've also again got separately fitted lamp irons we've also got the fire iron holders which you do get some fire irons in the detail bag with this model they come in black plastic so we'll be getting those painted up and adding them to the model we've got a pre-fitted vacuum pipe again like on the front of the loco we've got a coupling hook on the buffer beam and something I haven't yet mentioned rivets on both buffer beams front and back and again like on the front of the loco we've got metal spoon buffers we do have a plastic coal load in the bunker as you can see though what I might do at a later date is scatter my own coal load on top of that so now I turn my attention to the other side which the detail is all pretty much the same although we do have this extra lever just here as you can see and that's separately fitted and that's a really fantastic bit of detail to see 
Now before I forget, I must turn my attention to the livery application. Now I know that some people might not necessarily be a fan of the BR Black, but I do think it's quite a nice livery. The livery, it's the correct shade of black and it's been evenly applied, there's no defects or any blemishes anywhere on the model. There probably might be my grumpy fingerprint marks in perhaps a few places, but they'll be sorted out afterwards, if there are. And also, this loco does have the BR Early emblem, which has been very neatly and crisply applied. Now for its size, this is also quite a heavy loco. It is very weighty, but that's what you want, because it needs to pull trains. And the traction is quite important, so there's not going to be any issues with traction here, which is what we want to see. So I've added the fire irons from the detail pack and I have painted them up, I've painted them humble grey. I don't know if that's the correct colour they should be, but I've painted them just so you can see them easily rather than just being in black plastic. So that you can actually see them. Because otherwise if they're just left in the black plastic you can't really see them. So I've just painted them up to make them look nice. I haven't glued them in place. They're just resting on the hooks there. So yeah, they look rather nice there. So that's it then for my review for the Model Rail exclusive GWR 16XX Pannier tank made by Rapido Trains. And for my conclusion for this model, it's a stunning model. Rapido Trains have done it yet again. They've produced an exquisite model. I mean, okay, yes. The NEM pockets that do stick out on this model, especially the one at the front, I mean that does stick out quite a way. But I've removed it and so the model looks better without it. But I'm not going to rip into the model just because of that one little thing. Because it isn't fair at the end of the day. It's a very smooth and quiet runner. It's very powerful as well. And the detail on this is just stunning. So apart from the NEM pockets sticking out, that taken to one side, I still think this is a superb model. And so I am still pleased that I got it. And so I'm now looking forward to the Rapido Trains 15XX now, which I shall definitely be getting one of those. And so that will then give me pretty much all of the Gidwell Pannier tanks, if not most of them. And then I think when that model comes out, I shall definitely have to get all my Pannier tanks together and do a running session, so that's something that I shall definitely be looking forward to. So, if this is a model that you'd be interested in getting, then I'd say definitely go for it. Whether you decide to wait till there's a price reduction, or whether you're a Model Rail subscriber already, which you can get it a bit cheaper, or regardless if you're not a subscriber to Model Rail, but you're still willing to pay the price of this model, then I definitely recommend you get it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get this model running around on the layout and I'm going to get this pulling a mixed freight. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed. As ever don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to smash the like button. Feel free to post a comment and also don't forget to check out all my other videos that I've got on the channel. And I'll see you again next time but until then stay safe and take care. Ta-ra.